asking right off the bat who is Teffel and to you sir I say shame shame Teffel is a Polish Zerg player who's spotting in the lower left corner of the map whoop 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 he's green and from Team Dignitas but he's also probably like made the most progress as far as personal strength goes in the past year this is a player who, again, I would say last year at this time, if you said who is Teffel, I would also say who is Teffel. But he's taken on players like Jokshi in the past. He's taken on other big name Koreans and won in a regular basis. He competes in these tournaments. He's a fantastic player. And I just, I can't wait to see him finally win something. It was towards, I want to say winter. I don't know what month exactly. So I'm sorry about this to all the t big hardcore Teffel fans out there. But he finished up school or something or stopped working. I don't remember what it was. But he basically said, look, guys, it's time for me to go full time with StarCraft 2. And since then, he's had results out the wazoo. Now, uh, he's going for a whoo, bit of an early pull here versus Minato. I wouldn't be too surprised if this ends up being gas attached to it too. Talk about that in a moment, because let's not forget his opponent in the top right corner of the map from Cascade. It's going to be the yellow Zerg player, Minato. Formerly of Navi, formerly of FXO, but always an awesome player in my heart. Minato and Loli, who has retired sadly, uh, rest in peace, were some of my favorite Zerg players to watch. Not because they had results, and not because they could beat Koreans on a regular basis or anything like this, but because they always had very fun to watch strategies. Loli is one of those Zerg players who I still to this day refer to as like drunken boxing style of Zerg because you just couldn't predict what came at him, or uh, will come from him rather. Minato is really not too much different than that, but he plays a much more standardized style of play, so it's a little bit easier to predict the way he's going to come at you. But my favorite thing about Minato is he's the type of player that'll segment, you know, four roaches to the natural mineral line, burrow them there, hide till later, unburrow an attack when another attack's going on, and pick off your whole worker line. So we'll see if Teffel's up to dealing with that, of course, uh, with his slightly earlier pool and the much earlier gas. Well, I shouldn't say much earlier, it's really only a little bit earlier, but. He'll have speed out just a little bit sooner than that of his opponent. And with the queen coming out much earlier, it's going to be a quicker inject, which means the potential of more lings. But uh, the, the idea of a 13 pool, it's not really to rush. You can kind of go for like a zergling all in build off of it off two bases, sure. I'll give you that. But realistically, if you go for a 13 pool, it's much safer than a 15 pool. It doesn't hurt you that much economically. And it allows you to get, again, that queen out early enough to deal with early pool rushes from your opponent. In a best of one scenario, a 10 pool is not that uncommon. Hell, a 6 pool apparently is a thing, as we've seen that in a couple weeks. Uh, but, I mean, realistically, it's... I. Teffel's a player who can make Ling Lulins work. In fact, I feel like Polish players seem to be the badasses who can do that. Like, uh, I think uh, Nurcio, of course, like number one Ling Lulinner that I've ever seen in my life, but Teffel not too far behind. Uh, just still drunk for the time being. It's usually not for another minute or two where you start cutting your uh, drone production and really investing heavily into Ling, so by seeing this sort of delay, it's not too scary. Unfortunately, Teffel has his bailing nest revealed right away here, and not that this is a big tell in and of itself. Ooh, saves the drone. Actually, really nice there. Wait, why'd that sound not play? First blood. I guess I just didn't reset it properly last time. Anyways, um... The bailing nest in and of itself is not a big tell, but the timing of the bailing nest is. I mean, for this to be coming down this early, it certainly looks strange. So we see that Roach Warren from Minato being slapped down immediately. I mean, whether it's dealing with uh, an attack aggressively or, or defensively, I mean, you're going to need Roaches to try and circumvent the banelings. That armored statistic, or sorry, armored value that the Roaches have proves to be invaluable. Now, Teffel's also thrown down a Roach Warren immediately himself. I think he's a little bit worried, like, okay, this got scouted. It's probably not going to work. Whatever attack I had in mind won't cut it. So he's making a couple defensive banelings for now. There's two railings on the ramp to become sort of backup bailings if these two go down to something stupid. But uh, for now, I imagine both players just going to be going to that Roach versus Roach uh, Wars type scenario. Now, Minato, well, Teffel's a player who's really good at kind of being like those... Teffel's the muscle, I think, when it comes to this matchup for Roaches versus Roaches. He's going to be the guy that'll just make a ton of Roaches straight up and try and get at your face, try and get in your base and win the game. Whereas Minato's going to be the player who'll probably, yeah, already has plus one on the way. He'll probably invest in Burrow later on once he can afford it. And, uh, of course, is one of the few European players I see regularly use Tunneling Claws in ZVZ, which is really fun to watch. But one big key thing we see out of Teffel is investing in Lings right now. And you might be thinking, why bother with Lings? They're so bad versus Roaches. But in low numbers like this, they are simply cannon fodder in their truest and best form and the intention of the lings is to soak hits from the roaches so that there's less volleys shooting at Teffel's own roaches making it much more harder for Minato to uh, actually uh, deal damage to the core units of Teffel and of course let's not forget if you ignore the lings well they can be a bit of a problem but these roaches at the doorstep aren't gonna cut it they will pick off a couple of lings here initially but 
really not gonna get too much uh, too much for it. Tuffle has way too big of an army right now, guys. 13 roaches in total, two banelings, which aren't going to matter that much, but they're a threat to the mineral line. So let's say Minato decides to fight against this, or takes a fight over to the eastern half of the base or something, or fights around the ramp, and Tuffle just sneaks two banelings around the side here, puts them in the mineral line, plop, Bob's your uncle, you've lost half your drone. So uh, don't underestimate this, guys. This is a very powerful push coming out of uh, Tuffle. Now Minato's going to have defender's advantage here, which is key. So, roaches versus roaches, dead even. He'll have the addition of Queen DPS and a couple spine cars if they can complete. I like this wall off too, this really limits what uh, what amount of zerglings can get in here to actually do anything, but... Yeah, this is looking pretty darn good for Minato on the hold, as long as he doesn't make any stupid mistakes here. Again, as we see, those roaches wasting a lot of volleys on the lings initially. But looks like he should drive this back and will drive this back. So, Teffel, this wasn't an all-in. He's taking a third behind this. He's really not that worried. It was meant to do damage if afforded the opportunity, but unfortunately was not afforded the opportunity, so just turns around and goes home. Not the end of the world for him. And that'll also taking his own third while this is going on. A little bit behind that of Teffel's, but let's be honest, guys. It's not by an amount that's that devastating. If this was a third coming down like three minutes from now, that's where you're like, well, he's probably screwed. But this is perfectly fine. This is a standard game, and it's very slow opening out of both players, but still expected to be so. Now we do have plus two weapons on the way here for Minato at the same time that plus one is starting here for Teffel. So in that regard, Teffel's going to be behind. And even Roach Wars slapping faces like this, 28 to 25, Minato should actually be in a pretty good spot to take a decent engagement. Again, that plus one weapons, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't actually add that much this early on, especially when the Roach counts aren't insanely high in number, but uh, still will be a big effect. Unfortunately, getting caught a little bit behind these bushes will cause Minato as he took about two volleys from his Roaches before he could really engage. So despite having plus one, he finds himself in a terrible engagement spot. Positionally, he needs to retreat, and looks like he will do precisely that. Now, this is meant. Is he walking a spine crawler? He was. I, I thought that was Teffel for some reason trying to put a spine crawler here to defend. But uh, if I had, if I had realized that was Minato right away, I would have brought more attention to it. That would have been huge if he could have landed that and uh, burrowed it offensively. Not something you're often uh, afforded the opportunity to do, but let's not forget a spine crawler pretty much hits for almost twice that of a roach with no upgrades and has a heck of a lot of health attached to it too. In fact, uh, worth two roaches by the looks of it. If we can if we can pretend to do math. Two point something roaches. But it's like 2.005? I don't know. Not a big deal. Anyways, uh, with a third base for Teffel finishing a, bit, uh, sorry, a bit earlier than Minato, the key thing that he gets advantage-wise out of this is production. But neither player has a roaring economy, so no one's really got an advantage in that regard. So it's just kind of mining for the time being. Minato's got this massive army supply lead, but at the cost of a couple drones. And by a couple, I mean almost ten. So he's just finishing joining up right now. He's going to get a saturation going. We probably won't see an actual engagement until these guys are maxed out. But the longer this goes on, the better chance Minato can sort of extend his tech. As we see right now, he's got speed. He's got plus one. Teffel, he's only just started his speed. This was, of course, uh, an opportunity not afforded to him. He had to kind of sacrifice tech in order to get more roaches out physically on the field because he had less than that of Minato. But now we got a Hydralisk dead on the way, and I'm not sure I love this choice. I am a big anti Hydralisk fan in ZVZ. I still have yet to see a day where it's like, man, I'm really glad he went Hydralisk. That 100% won him the game. I mean, his engagements were Hydralisk contribute, and their DPS is fantastic. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue against that. But uh, again, a lot of the times it's kind of like pure Roach versus Roach Hydra. Pure Roach ends up winning a lot of the time, as long as both players are equally skilled and positioning is good for both. Now it's a bit curious to see. I didn't notice, but the resources lost right now is so incredibly close, despite the fact that they've uh, lost very different units so far this game. Just kind of a curious thing to see. But Roach is just looking for a place to take a fight. Teffel, of course, is playing very safe this game, very defensively. As the Hydralis get, it added, uh, get added into this army, he will be maxing out. And with both players on 2-2, Minato's losing every little advantage he's had this game the longer he waits to engage. As far as tech goes, that is. He's not been a positional advantage or with an army that he could have necessarily have attacked with. But this is what I was talking about earlier, guys, where he segments off low amounts of Roaches to go to Mineral Lines, sniping off Queens, kills Larva Injects, which means there's less production. Taking a fight where he gets both angles on his favor, moving right into the Hydralisks right away, getting right in range of this. It's going to be pretty close on this engagement with 40 Roaches over 32. Minato is looking really darn good. Some drones are pulled into this, but he's not in a position where he can dominate Teffel. He will do a lot of damage, but he's going to have to walk away from this, or if not walk away, at least yield this part of the map. And uh, if he takes out these Hydralisks with him, that'll be pretty nice. Looks like he'll do precisely that. 
Uh, he got some drone kills for that, but really not a lot. He got a queen snipe there, too. Actually, he got quite a few queen snipes. It's worth noting, Temple only has one queen right now, guys, which means that's only one queen injecting larva. That's three less units per hatchery per round, which means Monado technically has the potential to max out right now, where Teffel does not. And yeah, that was a really nice timing hit, too. That was just before Teffel's two level two weapon upgrades had finished. If that had finished in time, that would have certainly hurt that fight and uh, not had Monado do as much damage as he did. But, you know, despite the drone pull and despite how desperate that looked, Teffel held that really nicely. I gotta give him credit for that. Attacking from two different angles is always a bit rough, but hey. If it works, it works. Now he's actually opened up this gateway here to take a fourth, which is a little bit curious to see. It's a risky move, but I think this is that small donation of an advantage Minata's trying to press right now. So he says, look, I took a good fight. I picked up a couple queens. I could probably afford to take my fourth. And that's what he's trying to do right now, but his army's not up to snuff. And it's not because he's taken the hatchery, it's because he just hasn't remaxed it yet. Uh, he's got the mineral bank for it, but the gas has been lacking. He's getting his own hydro stand out right now, but as we see, Teffel's forces are looking to take a fight. Now, I don't know if there's enough roaches for this. It's a really hard call to make, because the reality is, hydralis are really good. But when you've got this many of them, it means you've got less roaches. So less tank, less bulk, less beef. To sort of shield wall, meat wall, if you will, for those uh, roaches. Losing a couple overlords here will suck for Monados. That's going to severely supply block him here. Not that it's going to matter, though. Teffel's going to help him with that as he cleans up a lot of the roaches and supply. But as we see, roaches moving on top of the Hydralisks right away. He says, screw it. I don't need to focus your roaches if I take out your Hydralisks. And that's going to cost Teffel a lot of his really expensive units in this composition. But Monado, with Defender's Advantage, should be able to reproduce enough roaches to hold off just purely the roaches of Teffel. The Hydralisks taken out of this equation removes so much DPS from this fight. But 2-1 versus 2-0 really upgrades not that much of the favor of Minato. It's pretty dicey and the only reason Teffel doesn't move in right now is because A, he doesn't have an overwhelming army and he knows Defender's Advantage will be more than enough to hold off a staggeringly low health army because half these roaches are pretty much dead guys. They're just dead men walking. But more importantly than that, he's got no scouting information. He's got like one overlord here. He has no idea what's waiting for him on top of these hills. A spy car is going to be a very, very important thing to have down for this fight too. Uh, Teffel may have taken his fourth, but Monado's been getting no use out of his, so he's got no advantage in that regard, other than just a, a little bit of extra larva. He's so far down in supply right now, this is not looking so great for Monado, but again, Teffel's investing in a lot of Hydralisks. I do like that he's making an equal amount of roaches hand in hand with this, but you kind of need like a 2 to 1 ratio when it comes to Hydralisks and roaches. Because as we saw there, Hydralisks can be focused down so quickly with only 80 health and almost no armor attached to them. In fact, no armor straight up attached to them. Roaches will focus right on them down very quickly. But uh, making his own Hydralisks now. I'm not sure if this will work out for Monado. We'll see. Both players taking a pretty decent engagement. Of course, the biggest thing was that Spine Core getting sniped immediately removes it from the equation. 40 Roaches to 31. 20 Hydralisks to 10. Nothing here numbers wise is in the favor of Monado. He may have to just straight up pull drones into this, guys. It's going to be a rough hold to say the least there's no positional way to take a fight here uh, evolution chamber getting sniped is actually probably going to help a little bit to create some cannon fodder through those broodlings but even then even then this fight looks uh, looking a little bit rough here for Minato trying to focus down the hydras I like that choice but again I think the numbers game might just be a little too much we're going to have to see Teffel still got double the roach count his hydras are still twice that of Minato's and with no static defense and no drones being pulled the production line of Teffel is just simply uh, well, actually, not Teffel, rather. Minato is just simply not going to be enough. This base is going to fall. He's trying to force a choke, but well played is going to be called. Good game will be thrown down. Teffel will move on to the quarterfinals to fight against Fraz, a Terran player.